everyone. We know how hard it can be to keep up with the latest news in Israel. So if you haven't had the time to stay on top of what's what in the Holy Land, we're here for you. I'm the Dargo Velazi, and this is ILTV's Weekly Review. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has arrived in New York ahead of the UN General Assembly and is meeting today with Ukraine's President Zelensky and Turkish President Erdogan. Kicking off his U.S. visit, Netanyahu held talks and a public dialogue with Tesla, SpaceX and Twitter tycoon Elon Musk. Meeting at Tesla headquarters in San Jose, California, Netanyahu's meeting with Elon Musk focused on artificial intelligence, confronting rogue nations and anti-Semitism. Netanyahu was hoping to reduce tensions between Musk and the ADL over hate speech allowed on his social media site X, formerly called Twitter. Uh, I also know your opposition to anti-Semitism. You've spoken about it, uh, tweeted about it. Uh, and all I can say is I hope you find within the the confines of the First Amendment, the ability to uh, stop not only anti-Semitism or roll it back as best you can, but any collective uh, hatred of a people that uh, you know anti-Semitism represents. Uh, and I know you're committed to that. I hope I hope you succeed in it. It's not an easy task, but I I encourage you and urge you to uh, find a balance. It's a tough one. I, obviously, I'm against anti-Semitism. I'm against anti really anything um, that is. Uh, you know, that promotes a hate and conflict. Um, and I'm in favor of that, which helps build society and take us to a better future um, for humanity collectively. Musk raised the topic of the judicial reform in Israel, noting anti-Netanyahu protests were being held outside his Tesla offices during the meeting. Uh, speaking of Israel, um, <laughs> speak of it. Uh, there's, there's, um, as, as you saw, some, some uh, protesters outside um, and, uh, I, you know, I've, to be frank, probably got the most amount of negative pushback from people at Tesla about this interview than anything else I've ever done. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if, if maybe if you could take a few moments to address, uh, sure. you know, the, the, I think it's the, primarily the judicial reform question. Netanyahu appeared to reverse course on the issue, describing legislation his coalition has been advancing through the Knesset, a mistake that would reject one imbalance by creating another. Netanyahu defended Israeli democracy. What I repeat what I just, just said a minute ago. Israel was, is, and will always be a robust democracy. Uh, but it, it, it's changed its, uh, uh, I would say, its character subtly and imperceptibly about uh, three decades ago. And After the meeting, Netanyahu headed to New York ahead of his address to the UN General Assembly at the end of the week. There, he is holding key meetings today with Ukrainian President Zelensky and Turkish President Erdogan. Netanyahu is slated to meet U.S. President Joe Biden in the UN on Thursday. Experience the power of truth with ILTV News. If you're looking for quality content and captivating visuals, join our news community and become an integral part of our team as we embark on a mission to unveil the real Israel, dismantling the web of lies and misinformation that surround reporting on Israel. By subscribing to ILTV News, you will not only have access to the latest updates, but you will also amplify our message, creating a ripple effect that carries the truth far and wide. Subscribe today and help reshape the narrative, available on the web, Android, and Apple. Prime Minister Netanyahu held talks with world leaders in New York on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. Netanyahu met for the first time with Ukrainian President Zelensky and Turkish President Erdogan ahead of the Prime Minister's much-anticipated meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden. More from ILTV, Steve Leibovich. It's an intense working day on the world stage, but not one unfamiliar to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. World leaders are gathered for the 78th meeting of the UN General Assembly, and Netanyahu will address the world body on Friday. On the sidelines of the GA, and before his much-anticipated meeting with President Biden, Netanyahu met several key world leaders, including a few for the first time. Netanyahu met Ukrainian President Zelensky for the first time against the backdrop of tense relations since the start of Russia's 2022 invasion. Netanyahu and Zelensky greeted one another with a handshake and a hug. After the working meeting, Netanyahu and Zelensky held a 15-minute one-on-one meeting. According to the Prime Minister's office, the meeting was friendly, with Israel pledging to continue providing Ukraine with humanitarian aid, including assistance in dealing with landmines and civilian warning systems. 
Netanyahu and Zelensky agreed to stay in touch, and the meeting was serious and comprehensive. Earlier, despite a history of mutual animosity, Netanyahu met for the first time with Turkish President Recep Erdogan. The two leaders reportedly discussed efforts to normalize relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Before the meeting, Erdogan told reporters he supported the Biden administration's initiative to broker an Israeli-Saudi deal, saying it would lower tensions in the region. President Isaac Herzog invited Erdogan to visit Israel during a trip to Turkey in July. Netanyahu had been set to visit Ankara in July before a health scare grounded him. Now, in a compelling address at the U.N. General Assembly, U.S. President Joe Biden reaffirmed America's commitment to global cooperation and emphasized the pursuit of peace in the Middle East through a two-state solution and regional normalization efforts. The United States seeks a more secure, more prosperous, more equitable world for all people because we know our future is bound to yours. Let me repeat that again. We know our future is bound to yours. And no nation can meet the challenges of today alone. U.S. President Joe Biden took the stage at the U.N. General Assembly, delivering a message of international cooperation and progress. He emphasized America's commitment to fostering peace in the Middle East, particularly by advancing a two-state solution between Israel and the Palestinians. President Biden also expressed the United States' keen interest in promoting normalization between Israel and Arab nations, with the ultimate goal of creating a more united and stable Middle East. He highlighted the positive impact of economic ties and spoke of his recent announcement at the G20 summit regarding an economic corridor that would connect India with the Middle East and Europe through Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Jordan and Israel. In his address, President Biden also called on the United Nations to stand up against Russian aggression in Ukraine. He asserted that allowing the division of Ukraine could endanger the independence of any nation. Furthermore, President Biden labeled the climate crisis as an existential threat to all humanity, referencing the recent global wildfires and natural disasters in North Africa. And peace efforts for a normalization deal between Saudi Arabia and Israel are ongoing. This according to the U.S. State Department, which on Monday denied reports of a freeze in talks. More in the following report. The U.S. State Department's Bureau of Near Eastern Affairs Monday evening denied reports that talks over the normalization between Saudi Arabia and Israel were frozen. In a tweet, the State Department said that the United States remains committed to furthering Israel's regional integration including through active diplomacy aimed at Israel-Saudi normalization. Talks are ongoing and we look forward to further conversations with both parties. The clarification comes following a report in the Arabic language online news outlet Elaf, which cited an unnamed Israeli official in the Prime Minister's office on Sunday as saying that Saudi Arabia has informed the Biden administration that it is freezing all talks over normalizing ties with Israel. According to the report, the official pointed out that the opposition by the current coalition to any gesture towards the Palestinians means torpedoing any possibility of rapprochement with Palestinians and thus with the Saudis. And indeed, the Saudi foreign minister, Prince Faisal bin Falhan al Saud, called on Monday for the two state solution to return to the forefront. In remarks to Saudi state TV, he said that there will be no solution to the Palestinian Israeli conflict without an independent Palestinian state. There were a series of deadly clashes over the past 24 hours between IDF security forces and Palestinian terrorists in Judea and Samaria and on the Gaza border. There were no reports of IDF injuries during the incidents. And more from our TV, Steve Leibovich. Judea and Samaria and Gaza also have flare-ups and clashes between militants and IDF security forces. This morning, a terrorist gunman was killed after being shot by IDF soldiers amid arm clashes in Akba Jabber near Jericho. The latest clash came after at least four armed Palestinian terrorists were killed in clashes with Israeli forces in Jenin last night. About 30 others were wounded during the fighting in the northern Samarian Palestinian city. A number of suspects were arrested by the Israeli forces. Elite units targeted a senior Al-Aqsa Brigade's terrorist commander in the raid. The army confirmed that a Rafael Spike Firefly suicide drone was fired at the terrorist cell during the clash.
The fighting began when an Islamic Jihad terrorist cell opened fire at Israeli forces and detonated explosive devices in the area. Earlier, one Palestinian was killed amid riots along the Gaza border. Eleven Palestinians were reportedly wounded during a third straight day of border disturbances. The rioting follows a Hamas decision to allow a return to violent protests along the border fence. On a daily basis, about 100 to 200 Palestinians gather at four separate locations where they burn tires and hurl rocks and explosive devices at the border barrier. As a result, Israel has now closed the area's border crossing, disrupting the entry of 17,000 Palestinian laborers. There were no reports of IDF injuries during any of the incidents.